here on the corner of Magnolia and Washington Street is where we're going to be today. The Orange County Regional History Center. I've never actually been inside, but I've heard there's a lot of interesting things inside the old Orange County Courthouse here. Hi everybody and welcome to the world of Micah. Today we are in downtown Orlando, Florida where we're going to be taking a closer look at the Orange County Regional History Center. You guys are going to get to tag along. We're going to make this a lot of fun and hopefully learn a few things. Let's take a closer look. Let's take a closer look. At one point this was the entrance, the main entrance to the Orange County Courthouse. You would walk up the stairs there, but now they don't want you doing that because it's turned into a museum and the main entrance is down that way. Love coming down here to downtown Orlando, the heart of downtown Orlando. You get some pretty amazing views being downtown in this city. Just checking this out before we go inside. Look at these old postcards of Orlando. Lake Ivanhoe, Celery City, the Orange County Courthouse, Orange Avenue, not too far from that. The old Wigwam Village, the old Wigwam Hotel. And then a brown bull in Florida pastures. On the other side here, there's Lake Eola at night, picking oranges, an American alligator, and then the 1927 Orange County Courthouse. Which is exactly where we're headed. Here we are at the main entrance. I'm gonna get a ticket. Admission for adults are $8. Seniors are seven dollars, students seven dollars, military seven dollars, and ages five through twelve six dollars. And they are open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Sunday they are open from noon to 5 p.m. So a lady at the front said to start at the fourth floor and work our way down. And right here it says your journey begins here. So we're doing this, you guys. So we're gonna be learning about the beginnings. Florida with the gallery one on the right hand side followed by gallery two on the left hand side and this exhibit is called discovering a paradise it's very quiet in here I think we might be the only ones nice little displays here talking about how there's not a lot of drink but there's water everywhere. You've ever heard the uh, the saying, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink? And then this way, uh-oh, you gotta be cautious. There is a sinkhole area right over here. This area is talking about the way water works here in Florida and exactly how sinkholes work. And this is pretty incredible. This is talking about the sinkhole that I did a video on not too long ago. I'm going to step here into the sinkhole being very cautious because you're actually at the very bottom of the sinkhole as you can see. This is what it looks like in a sinkhole. Wow. You ever read the video of the Winter Park sinkhole? They have an exhibit of that sinkhole. Wow. Yeah, we were right there, you guys. Incredible. I did not know this was here. If you guys want to see the video I did on this sinkhole, the link will be down below in that description box. Over here they have a display of some early Florida natives and how they would live and survive here in this state. 
on this display they're talking about the Spanish settled first and longest here, ruling from 1513 to 1821. Showing them coming into St. Augustine. I have visited St. Augustine and I plan to go back and do a whole lot more filming out there. Some early exploration and settlement displays here. Pretty nice. I think we're going to move on to the, the second exhibit. And here's the second part of discovering a paradise. And here we have a cabin and talking about two groups within a common culture. First we're talking about the Seminoles, which as you know, there is Seminole County, which is named after the Seminoles. And here inside this little cabin, they have a little display of a lady and what they wore between the late 1700s and early 1800s. Some paintings of what the, the Seminoles would be wearing and different things they would use in their culture. Now this is super cool. I was just here a few weeks ago at Fort Christmas in Christmas, Florida and here's a scale model of Fort Christmas. Absolutely incredible. We walked right through there you guys and over here was that time capsule. We went inside that building. If you would like to see that episode I'll also put a link to that in the description box. It's really cool seeing a full scale model with the soldiers and the horses and everything, how it was set up back in 1837. It was built in 1837 on Christmas Day. Now this is pretty neat. It says, welcome to our version of the Hatfields and McCoys. The barber Mazel feud, February 21st, 1870. A single gunshot shatters the fragile peace in post-Civil War Orange County. To death, the only Orange County sheriff to fall in the line of duty sparks a rash of brutal, vigilant justice. When the dust settles, as many as nine people are dead and no one has been charged for a crime. It's one of the most lawless and bloody times in Orange County history. It leaves deep scars in the frontier community. And right here is the gun on the display here. It says, did this gun shoot the sheriff? According to family lore, this is the gun that murdered Sheriff Dave Mazell on February 21st, 1870. And that's him. Right there. The story goes that Andrew Jackson, Jack Barber, fled Florida with Old Most Barber before Sheriff Evans' posse could get its hands on them. Eventually, Jack Barber returned to Florida and passed this gun to his daughter, Susan. Though he told her it was the gun that fired the fatal shot, he didn't say who pulled the trigger. And that's the gun right there. It's kind of broken off here at the end of the barrel. But that's got some history to it, definitely. Walking down the ramp here, I noticed this quote that definitely sets the tone of this room. There are no oil wells, factories, or mines. Orlando is built on the peel of an orange. And that's exactly what this area is talking about. Take a look at the, the citrus tree they have in here. And it's talking about how fruit made it big in Florida. It was introduced by the Spanish in 1565. Citrus soon grew wild in Florida in the 1700s. The British raised citrus along with St. John's River and shipped the fruit to northern colonies. By 1870, northerners with orange fever planted groves on the St. John's. Some old uh, advertisements talking about citrus and Check that out. These oranges were unloaded at the Kissimmee City Dock. Since fruit shipped long distances, often bruised and spoiled, Spanish moss and tissue were used for covering. And the next section over here is pretty awesome. Here's a Florida Citrus promotional calendar from 1974. And these are some old fruit crate labels. You would see these labels on the sides of crates all over Central Florida. Down here, some different items and vintage collectibles, including Mr. Orange Bird right there. 
did a video on the orange bird a couple of years back. It's quite fun. It's cool to see a an old school Florida orange bird there. Wow. It says Florida orange bird on the very back of him. You can barely see it there. Very awesome display, but I think we're going to move on to the next section. We're going to go down to the third floor, building a kingdom. Stepping off the elevator, there's a courthouse clock here, which is from the red brick courthouse in 1892. Every Sunday morning for over 60 years, the clock keeper would climb the 80 foot tower and wind the clock. The courthouse was demolished in 1957. Room number 305 is the old courtroom. The criminal court right here. There is something in here that I wanted to show you guys. Now this is pretty neat. It's talking about the block upon which the History Center and Heritage Square stand is not only the historic location of five Orange County courthouse buildings, but it's also the point from which Orange County was first surveyed and subdivided. This block has served as an important focal point of county activity for more than 150 years. And check this out. 1926, ground breaks for the courthouse you are standing in today. And then there's the new courthouse in 1998. Back here, some courthouse from 1875. The third courthouse, the red brick courthouse from 1892. And then the red brick courthouse is raised to make room for the courthouse annex, which opened in 1960. But we are in this courthouse right here. It was dedicated October 12th, 1927. And this is the courthouse. If these walls could talk. Never been in a courtroom before. This is kind of uh, eerie in a way. They're right over here in front of this chair. Ted Bundy carved his name on this desk. There it is. Ted Bundy. It's not a joke. That is the real deal. And they've covered it with this protective piece. So nothing will happen to this. This is pretty incredible. This is a photo of courtroom B in 1960. And right here is where the judge would be seated. And look at this, you can walk right up here and see what it looks like to look out at a courtroom. And now we will enter building a kingdom. Now this is very nice. They have little displays going all the way down giving you different pieces of history and changes that were happening in Florida. And this is definitely interesting to me. Destination Florida, tourism before Disney. Florida began luring visitors to the semi-tropical playground not long after the end of the Civil War. But it was the middle class tourist who came later who brought the prosperity to the state. When Henry Ford introduced the Model T in 1909, the automobile became affordable for the average American. The sense of adventure unleashed these pioneer car owners, overcame the transportation difficulties they encountered. These new travelers needed hard surface roads with state-to-state -state connections, dubbed tin canners for soldering tin cans to their radiator caps. They and the auto tourist that followed expanded Florida's tourism and, and industry during the first half of the century. I didn't know people were starting to come down to the Sunshine State all the way back after the Civil War. To help tourists find their way around Central Florida, the city installed the neon sign at the corner of Colonial and Orange Avenue in the mid-1950s. It says downtown 
Orlando with an arrow. And either this is it or a very nice recreation. But very cool, nonetheless. Little neon sign. Look at these old souvenirs. Wow, I'm a big sucker for pennants. And that souvenir of Orlando, Florida pennant is very, very neat. Wow, look at these old postcards. I mean, they're not the actual postcards, but they're blown up versions so you can actually see them. Old Central Florida and Orlando postcards, including Walt Disney World, the opening day celebration, and Christmas Florida. Oh my gosh, they have a little piece of the wigwam from the wigwam village here. Look at this. The wigwam village. It was located on South Orange Blossom Trail. It was a motel. And they had a seven motel chain across the country from California, Arizona, Louisiana, Kentucky, Alabama, and Florida. Orlando's opened in 1935 and they were operated until 1973. This is so neat. And when I was a kid, I used to go to Cypress Gardens in Lakeland, Florida all the time and I used to watch the people ski. And here's some displays, some old Cypress Garden skis. It looks like an advertisement poster and some old merchandise down here. Look at that. Wow. Cypress Gardens is now Legoland. Let's walk inside the, the wigwam here and see what else they have. Oh, that scared me to death. They have a little sensor playing some music as you walk in. Wow. Okay, the Senator. I did a video on this years ago. I will post the link to that video in the description box. Look at that. That's what the inside of the wigwam hotel looked like this was the office circa 1960. And there's the Bach Tower advertisement, the Weeki Wahi Springs, all kinds of merchandise down here. Look at this, how incredible. And Gatorland, I have been to Gatorland several times. This is pretty awesome. It's giving you a layout of Florida, but here's an even better look at Central Florida. Walt Disney World. Over here, the old Universal Globe there, downtown Orlando, the airport, Gatorland, SeaWorld. This is pretty cool. It's even cooler because this is my home. And I hope they never get rid of that, the Eiffel Tower, because that represents the MGM Studios even though it no longer exists at the MGM Studios. Next section is gonna be about Central Florida at war. Here's a dog tag and an M1 combat helmet, circa 1942 to 1945. First aid kit. Everything laid out correctly so you can see exactly what you're going to grab. This is a sailor's cap from 1942 to 1945 and then this it's a women's U.S. Coast Guard cap, purse, and their dog tag. There's the purse, and that's the dog tag. They have a nice display for Captain John Young here. It's an Orlando High School graduate, near the United States Navy, and first served on the destroyer USS Laws. After completing test pilot training at the United States Navy Test Pilot School in 1959, Young served the Naval Air Test Center working with Crusader and Phantom Fighter weapon systems. Shortly after, Young was selected by NASA as an astronaut, becoming the first person to fly in space six times, including missions Gemini 3, Gemini 10, and the first space shuttle in 1981. Young's military and NASA career spanned over four decades, and these are some of his belongings here. One of his jackets, circa 1990. different awards, patches, and this is John Young's flight suit, circa 1985, the Gemini 3 patch on this, Space Lab 1 patch, 
John Young's things, including his Salute to Excellence medal, presented to John Young by the American Academy of Achievement. Now this display is talking about the Orlando Naval Trading Center from 1966. Look at this. Humongous plane. Well, a piece of a plane and a propeller. Just sitting inside this museum here. And there's a scrapbook you can flip through talking about all the maintenance and different trainings that you have to do. This was compiled in the 1940s. It says right here, our days at the Orlando Air Base captures daily life on the base. You just flip through here and see what it was like for those men and women who are working out there just like this gentleman is right now. And the final exhibit we're going to look at in this floor something that happened in October of 1971 as you can see there on Cinderella Castle it says remember opening October 1971 well that sign I'm sure this is a recreation but it's right here this is kind of a unique way to look at the opening of Walt Disney World nothing good comes cheap along with growth and renown Walt Disney World brought cost Retirees faced higher taxes on suddenly pricey land. Crime rose, millions of visitors jammed highways, and strained Florida's water supply. County commissioner said, I wish the mouse had stayed in California. And that continues to be a thing to this day. Everything is pricey, and there's millions and millions of visitors. And this is I-4 right here, bumper to bumper traffic still a daily occurrence and this is also very interesting to read about how walt disney world's customer service and things challenged humbler attractions the opening of epcot and disney mgm studios made it harder for less glitzy sites to lure tourists and with a multi disney day ticket what else would you need over here they're showing the water slide this is from river country but it's talking about how the crowds that would once go to wakaiva springs went to Disney instead. And then down here at Ocala's Six Gun Territory, promised action and entertainment, as you can see, looking like an old west town. It closed in 1984 because it could not compete with Disney. But then Disney also inspired spinoffs. Well, Wet n' Wild, Splendid China, Spaceport USA. This is Circus World. After 15 years of competing with Disney, they pulled down their tents in 1986. And then Boardwalk Baseball opened in 1987, closed in 1990. Now this is really neat. These are early sketches of the Country Bear Jamboree and the Diamond Horseshoe Review and the Jungle Cruise. You can turn these and I'll show you different sketches. There's the monorail going through the Contemporary Resort. An actual photo of the Polynesian. And then murals that we're going to go into the hotel. All this will be in the contemporary. And this is Magic Kingdom's Fantasyland sketches from the 1960s. This is pretty awesome. This is a blown up version of what you would get inside the Orlando Sentinel. Wednesday, October 27th, 1971. Covering the opening of Walt Disney World. They would have taken this and inserted it into the Orlando Sentinel on that day. Different pieces of memorabilia are in this glass case, including complimentary admission to the America on Parade world premiere. Very cool. Friday, June 6, 1975. The opening spectacular and dedication ceremony of Walt Disney World. Friday, October 22nd, 1982. Spaceship Earth Gala, the World Showcase Festival reception and opening October 23rd, 1982. And this is the Life magazine covering Disney World opening. It's a nice little pin, Animal Kingdom, and also an Animal Kingdom car tag. And a glass mug for Splash Mountain for its opening in 1989, painting across. There's the grand opening. November 6, 1997 of Downtown Disney. They've recreated the crane and how they took the different pieces of Cinderella's castle and placed it during the construction. And as you can see, 
That's exactly what they're doing in this photograph here. Right up here on the tip top, there's the contemporary and a little monorail set that goes all the way through Spaceship Earth and back to the Grand Floridian. Other pieces of Cinderella Castle are here, and I believe they have a little video you can watch. Right here, it says to touch the wand. Let's see what happens exactly. I'm sure, it's a short little little video. Yep, short little video on the history of Disney World. Remember, this is before Disney. BB. We were up to then primarily a rural agrarian, you know, citrus-based income society. Gatorland. I went in my kindergarten field trip. Before Disney, just going down to Lake Eola, I think one of the prettiest pictures we have is of our son trying to feed the swans when he was about three. A weekend summer outing was to take the family and go to San Lando Springs. The lakes, the fishing, a couple parks with glass bottom boats and things of that sort. The outdoor living with kids, bonfires, you live in shorts and sneakers. There was an awful lot to do without going to be entertained. You entertain yourself. Different videos that you can watch if you just touch that wand right there. And to the right, they have a little display of merchandise from Disney World inside this little piece of Cinderella Castle. Old school back scratcher. I believe that is an ashtray. Disney World Plate, Finalmation. Look at that. Some Florida Orange Bird merchandise there. Polynesian Village Glass. Wow. Some of this stuff's pretty neat, including that plate. Always been fascinated by that plate. They made a Walt Disney World one and a Disneyland plate just like that. I would love to have one of those in my collection. All right, heading down to floor number two celebrating the community. There's two exhibits here. We're going to be starting on the right hand side and then finishing with the traveling exhibit hall. First stop is going to be celebrating the community. Now this topic is one that most people don't like to get into but I believe it is important to not erase history and what actually happened. Look at that sign right there for the Orange County Courthouse restroom. And this is the directory for the County Welfare Department. And just reading this really puts things in perspective. If you were an African American living in Orlando in the 1950s, you weren't really living the best life. Just look at this list of things you could not do. More displays here talking about the civil rights era and how far we've overcome these obstacles of history. Now this is a traveling exhibit hall and I wanted to show you guys a few of the artwork pieces that they have on display here. The accidental historian here is talking about how our world is basically just non-stop status updates and images generated by thousands per minute reflects our culture today and, be, and begs the question, what will make it to the history books of 2119? The individuals, artists, and collectors featured in this exhibit focus on creating for the now, but just may become the best accidental historians of the future. So everything you see here are just things that people have either taken a photo of, sketched, or created. And these are the things that I believe will be in the history books, and so does this place. This is what our future is to become. As you can see, this is showing a ride at Walt Disney World breaking down and some things of recent history happenings here in Orlando and the world. Now this is pretty cool. This guy named Fred, Fred Beavis over the years held on to his passes no matter what the condition look at these backstage passes he's gotten from Iron Maiden ACDC Chicago 
Foreigner, John Mellencamp, Van Halen, Journey. Wow. And I believe it continues on the other side here. Yes, it does. Kiss, Def Leppard, Styx, Amy Grant. Some more ACDC, The Kinks, Oreo Speedwagon, Ozzy Osbourne, Fleetwood Mac. A lot of history here. Look at these backstage passes from MGM Studios. Wheel of Fortune. Security pass from Universal Studios. Backstage pass for MGM Studios, Walt Disney World pass, production crew. Fred Beavis has done some really cool stuff. And it's awesome that he's kept on holding on to all of his passes. Wow. He's done a lot of cool stuff. And you know what? It's funny, I kind of collect the same thing. I have several passes from things that I've done or got invited to do. That one's really cool. Nickelodeon. This exhibit is pretty incredible. Lots to see and read inside this exhibit. If you would like to get in touch with the History Center or via social media, these are their taglines. And now we are heading back towards the lobby and Emporium. Now if you're familiar with this man, Mr. Bill Bear, then these bears will look familiar to you in his appliance stores in Winter Park and Altamont Mall Shoppers from the 1950s and 60s. And these are them. Well, two of his bears from the 1950s and 60s. Pretty large, and that's an old sign. So the one we have on display here is Beethoven, which is that one on the left, and then to the right is Schubert Bear. And that's him right there. And this is the Mercury capsule. The Mercury was the first US manned space capsule. Bell shaped for better aerodynamics, the actual capsule was only 11 feet 6 inches tall by just over 6 feet wide. Look at this. Now this is a recreation of the actual Mercury space capsule. You can sit in here, take a seat, see what it looks like if you were in this bad boy. Well, I'm going to tell you guys something. That was pretty incredible. I had a blast checking out the History Center. And I encourage you, if you're ever here in Central Florida, to check this place out. For the money, it's pretty awesome. Well, you guys, we did it. We saw everything there was to see, for the most part, here inside the Orange County History Center. And I think it's time to say goodbye. But if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a big thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It's free. It'll keep you updated with my latest video. Also, if you would like to support my channel, please visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash world of Mike. And we're donating $1 a month can help fund episodes just like this. All the links to my social media, Spreadshirt, and Patreon, and those other videos I was telling you about are in the description box down below. Feel free to click on that description box down below and venture out to all those other links if you choose to do so. I'll see you on the next episode of World of Mike, everybody. Until then, stay weird. Goodbye. <laughs>